Hello, um, my name is Nick. I'm here to talk to you about exploring the world's open data portals with TerraJS. Um, I work for CSIRO, which is Australia's national science agency, um, one of the world's largest multidisciplinary science and technology organisations. Uh, if you want to know more, go to csiro.au. Uh, TerraJS, what is it? Uh, TerraJS is an open source framework for web-based geospatial catalogue explorers. Uh, it's a cesium leaflet-based in-browser tool for looking at 2D and 3D data. Uh, website terra.io if you'd like to know more. Um, TerraJS has three main components. Uh, you've got a catalogue, tree structure, you can search through it, you can view metadata. Uh, map component, quite important. Um, 3D map with cesium, 2D fallback as well. Uh, and we've also got data controls. So we've got a workbench on the left showing a legend, a little time component. Uh, we also have a few other panels and tools that let you interact with data sources. So how do we do this? Well, open source software, um, Leaflet, Cesium, React, MobX, ProtoMaps uh, for the vector tile renderer. Uh, lots and lots more usual JavaScript dependency tree of tens of thousands of things. Uh, so our maps, uh, we kind of make two different types of maps. We've got our fully open maps, very much open data portal focus, very much client side running in the browser, very little server side component, um, all using the same open source code base, just com configuration changes. Uh, we've all, we also do partially closed digital twin maps, you know, 3D data focus, quite server side heavy. Um, more, you know, closed proprietary formats, format conversions, dealing with enterprise auth access control. I'm not going to really go into that because it's not really in the, I don't know, it's not very open. Um, so our main flagship map is the Australian national map. Uh, it's the birth of TerraJS, uh, platform for geospatial data discovery, visualisation and sharing, launched in 2014, got about 14,000 data sets on there at the moment, getting about 30,000 sessions a month. Uh, when you break down those 15,000 data sets, you've got 46 open data portals that it connects to directly. Uh, and then we've also got about 1,100 curated data sets on top of that. Uh, another one of our, another two of our open maps are Digital Earth Australia and Africa. Uh, so these were developed in partnership with Geoscience Australia for looking at Landsat Sentinel satellite imagery and derived products. Um, and we connect directly to the Open Data Cube, Open Web Services stuff. Uh, another map, uh, Pacific Map, which was developed with the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, connects to the Pacific Data Hub through their CCAN and SDMX API, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, one of our closed maps, uh, Victoria Digital Twin, is done with the state of Victoria and Australia. Um, just launched, lots of very cool data on there. Uh, one example is this, this 3D aerial imagery of the Great Ocean Road, uh, south coast of Australia. I've forgotten the resolution, but it's very nice. And so we've got this tool where you can kind of click on a spot in the map and it will move the camera down to the ground. You can then inspect the, the imagery. Um, so it's a little bit slow loading here, but you can see as I kind of move the camera around, yes, you're getting more levels of detail popping in. Uh, so this is served through cesium 3D tiles. Uh, so what kind of data sources can you connect to? Um, again, all in a web browser. One kind of caveat there is sometimes a proxy is required depending on cross-origin resource sharing. Some services don't let you connect to it through a web browser, which is obviously fair enough. It's there for a reason. Um, so sometimes you do have to set up a proxy to, to allow this stuff to happen. Uh, so imagery tile services, we don't currently have proper raster support, but it is coming. Um, so you've got your usual WMS, WMTS, Mapbox style, the ArcGIS equivalents, uh, vector data, web feature service, ArcGIS, um, your usual vector file types, and, uh, and Mapbox vector tiles now. Uh, 3D sources, very much cesium heavy, uh, but we did just add the WebAssembly version of the op Open Asset Importer Library, which allows you to convert about 40 different 3D file formats to GLTF, so you can view them in the browser, very cool. Um, tabular sensor data, so that's point lat long source and also region mapping data. Uh, so you've got CSV, SDMX is a statistical API which is used by a lot of big organisations around the world to publish their statistical data. 
uh, OGC sets observation service, Socrata, and Open Datasoft is, is, is up and coming. Uh, open data portals. So these create the data sources that I just previously outlined. So you've got CCAM, Catalog Service for the Web, Socrata, Open Datasoft, a few others there. Um, again, all in a web browser. You've got your usual limitations there. File size, complexity of the geometry, what are the formats, how can you access them. CRS, we all know about Web Mercator. What do I do? So I live in Sydney, um, software engineer for Terry JS. I mainly work on the 2D data visualization and also these, these portal connections and getting them to work. So how do you explore the open data with Terry JS? So I've split it up into four different sections. You've got the discovery side, visualization, analysis, and then finally creating and sharing maps with people. So warning, I do have a lot of videos. Um, it's a very visual presentation, so I hope you can see the screen. Obviously, we know about the limitations with the presentations here. So this is the format that I've tried to use. Um, so we start with discovery of the open data. Um, so catalog, as I pointed out earlier, tree structure. You click through like a folder directory. Um, and as you click through certain things, metadata is going to appear depending on the sources. Um, so these groups can be manually created for curated data sets, or if you have an open data portal, it will just appear kind of in the tree and you can browse through it. There's also the ability to query certain types of open data services. Again, follows the tree structure. Uh, so the example on the screen is an open data soft server by a locality in Australia. And you can see that I can browse the data by keyword and a few other things, but it just depends on the API and our implementation of connecting to that API. Uh, we've also got search, very important. So we've got two, two methods of searching, uh, a dynamic in-browser search, which gets a bit complicated if you've got 46 data portals to try and search. It's not really doable. Uh, so we've also got a tool that generates a little catalog index file that massively speeds up um, searching. Visualization, the interesting stuff. So imagery. So your usual kind of imagery map visualization, this is on a 3D globe, you've got opacity, all that good stuff. Um, it's a time series data set. So Terrier will automatically recognize that this WMS has a time dimension. It will render a time picker. You can go through, select year, date, so on. Um, it will also let you animate the time series. So depending on the service and the latency, it will try and do a good job. Sometimes it succeeds, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we've also got a compare feature, which lets you duplicate a data set and change dimensions and split it across screen space. So here I've split the, this WMS and I've set the date different on the left side. Uh, so you can then drag this slider across to see um, differences. So this is a vegetation cover data set. Uh, vector data. So Terrier has an automatic vector styling engine. So the whole point of it is you can kind of drop in any vector data and it will try and create a visualization that is somewhat sensible. Um, so this is a, 300, a 200 megabyte GeoJSON file that's come through WFS through a CCAN service in Australia of contours. And so it's recognized that there's this altitude attribute um, and it's tr you know, given it a color scale and, and yeah. But if you don't like the vector styling, we've also just added the ability to edit the style. So here you've got your usual D3 um, color scales, which are coming from Color Brewer and a few other sources. Um, so here we go, I've just changed one of them to this red, yellow, blue color scale. Um, we've also got nice sequential color scales. Um, so I'm gonna change it here to the, um, I've forgotten the name of it. I can never remember the names of these. That one, yep. Um, we've also got the ability to change other symbology um, properties. So probably quite hard to actually see up there. So I'm going to go up and, and I'm going to change the width of the lines and so that will slowly update in real time. Whether this is a useful visualization or not is, yeah. It's very pretty though. Yeah, I could look at this for a while. Anyway, um, yes, so tabular time series kind of work in the same way. But you've got point sources. Um, so you get that automatic styling uh, it, knows that it, it knows it's a time series, so it will bring up a little chart um, when you click on it, and you've got a little time slider at the bottom that will let you animate those color values. Uh, so this is coming from an open data soft server in Australia. Um, this is another time series chart of power generation in Australia. 
Another thing that you can do is combine these charts to do some sort of rough comparison. Um, so I've just selected two different power stations in Australia and I'm just expanding the time series chart and then you can see a nice kind of augmented chart at the bottom there that allows you to compare. Uh, we also get all the automatic styling stuff. This is a very silly example, as you'll see in a second, uh, but we've added the ability to change marker symbology. So here I'm changing the point symbology by the fuel source. Um, this video is a little bit slow, but yeah, changing by the fuel source um, and as I go through the process, I should have timed this better. Um, so I'm, I've got fossil fuel source there. I'm giving it a little water droplet. You know, kind of makes sense. I've got solar there. Uh, we've got all the Mapbox marquee, Mackey icons in here. So you get a nice base of, of icons you can use. You can also copy and paste a URL to an image in there. Um, and this is where it kind of gets silly because I've run out of ideas. So I set it water mill. Obviously, it shows you what you can do with, with this sort of stuff. Uh, and then it will update the legend so you can actually see what the data is showing. Uh, we also have region mapping. So this is your usual kind of, you know, chloropleth mapping, which joins tabular data with region geometry, vector tile-based. Uh, we have a lot of different region sets, but unfortunately, they are mostly Australian-based. Uh, but we do provide a tool to let you generate your own. So this is a nice region mapping example coming from the Australian Bureau of Statistics through their SDMX API. Um, so we can pretty much bring up all of the, the public facing st statistical data that's published by them. Time series region mapping automatically rec recognizes the time dimension. So you can do the same thing. You can go and you can expand the charts. You can compare values over time for, for particular regions. And you can also edit the style as well if you want to. So, analysis of open data. Analysis is in quotes, because it's very hand wavy. It's the usual, I don't know, like it's not rigorous analysis or anything like that. It just provides a certain set of tools that you can use to do very qualitative, quick sort of analysis. Um, so export there allows you to export data to do real analysis. Um, so we've got things like web coverage service export, which will let you um, take chunks of a WMS and get the raw raster data. Uh, we've also got vector tabular export as well. The compare tool I talked about lets you do that kind of screen space comparison between two, two different data sets. We've got a few other rudimentary tools like measure, line of sight, which is in development, um, and a few more coming. We do have support for web processing service, so that's kind of as close as you get to real analysis. Uh, we also have a few specific open data cube um, analysis tools available. Uh, if you're, I can talk to you about that later if you're interested. And we also have this new plugin support that we've developed, which allows you to extend that in a much easier way. So this is an example of the web processing service, our implementation. Um, so this example calculates the mean value for monthly vegetation, fractional cover, and precipitation. So it accepts GeoJSON. Terrier talks to the WPS service. It recognizes this and it lets you draw a region on a map. It will also let you select existing regions depending on which data sets you've got in your map. Um, it's got a text field that lets you name the polygon. So it will then run this process on that WPS server, service server, and it will just return, returns a bunch of time series data sets you can then look at. So you can export these, you can overlay them, you can also share them if you want to. Um, so the next and last part of, of exploring the open data, you can create and share maps. So everything that you do in TerraJS, you can create unique share links that let you kind of capture the state of the map and share it with people. Um, so the main way of doing this is we have a function, which I'm sure most of you understand. It's just that it creates a unique URL that captures the state of the map. Um, and so my lovely example with custom marker symbology you could share that with someone if you wanted to. We also have an embed function, which is very similar, but it just provides HTML to let you embed the map state into your own website. We also have a story function, um, which is kind of similar to, to a share link, but it's got multiple scenes. Again, another silly example that I've made up. Um, so you can just create these scenes. You can give it a title and a tagline. Um, so here I said vegetation cover and quite green here, and then 
you know, you can go in and add more data, you can make any changes you want. So I go in and I add a, the, the, yeah, the vegetational fractional cover, which is a little bit more interesting to look at, and then I zoom into Florence. Um, but you can do anything here, you can create whatever kind of scenes you want um, with everything I've demonstrated so far. Um, so I create another scene here, and I just notice that there's a little bit of red around Florence. Florence. That's why I say there's a little bit of uh, bare soil here. Very descriptive. I'm just going to skip forward here. So then once you've created this story, um, thank you, um, you can play it back and share it. So how is this useful to you? You don't live in Australia. What about your own open data? Well, you can add your own data to any Terrier map, whether it's hosted by us or anyone. Uh, you can also drag and drop files in. Um, and it's open source. You can host your own map if you want to. Um, all of our open maps are the same Terrier code base with different configuration, just JSON configuration. So here's a nice example of an open data portal that I've added to a map. Uh, so I'm really sorry about my Australian twang here. Bologna, open data soft server. I've added this in. Um, so they publish a lot of cool data for that uh, province or city, I guess, but I, I'm not actually sure how wide the... Um, the server goes. Anyway, so I'm typing in a URL to this open data soft server. This is all just happening client side. It adds the data. It's going to organize it through a few different um, things that open data soft provides. And so I'm going to look at theme. I've clicked on transport. I'm trying to find a layer of bus lines here, but I can't speak Italian. So there we go. So I'm, yeah, it will show you all of the metadata that's available on that uh, open data soft data set. It's going to have to change the map view to Italy because we're in Australia. And there you go. You've got a nice view of all of the populations. Um, we're going to change the map so you get a little bit more context, the base map. Um, so you've got all the automatic styling there. I change it to bus line. It's tried to visualize it as a kind of scalar quantity, which doesn't really make sense. So I change it to qualitative. And you can see all the bus lines now. So another example is um, drag and drop. So here I have a 350 megabyte GeoJSON file that you can just drag onto the screen. Uh, this is of tree canopy data in one of the states in Australia. Um, you've got a list of all the supported files there on the left. Um, so this video I've tried to keep in real time because I didn't want to doctor it to show that it is, there are delays as you do things because there is just so much data. Um, so you click on a feature, brings up all of the properties, I notice that there's this height property there. So I changed the styling to look at the height because at the moment tree area isn't really showing me very much. Um, so it recomputes that styling. And as I zoom out, I notice that there's this really annoying white outline on everything. So I go and change it. I'm just going to speed through this because I'm running out of time. So I remove the border. And then I set the color scheme to something that's a little bit more pleasing. And then you get, you get quite a nice visualization of tree canopies uh, in Melbourne. So I also said you can create your, map, your own map. TerraJS is open source. You can do whatever you want with it, you know, obviously sticking to the license. Um, MIT on oh no, Apache, Apache license. Um, that's an example of a JSON config. Very simple. That's just describing an open data soft data set, just a single one in your catalog. Obviously, very customizable and extendable. You can push that as far as you want. Another thing to note is that if you do write your own JSON, Terrier JSON config, you actually don't need to host your own map. You can take that file, you can drag it onto an existing Terrier map and get the full functionality of Terrier configuration. You can always extend Terrier. Uh, open source project, love finding new contributors. Um, we have a new plugin system that makes it, very, makes it a lot easier to add your own tools. Um, can also, also develop support for other data portal services, formats, whatever you need. Not going to talk about that today, obviously. Um, future plans. So search data sets by location is asked for a lot, especially if you have 14,000 data sets. Searching via text doesn't really cut it. Um, we're also looking to add user workflows to add more complex data. Because um, some, you know, I showed you that example of adding that open data soft portal. Some data portals aren't going to let you just type in a URL and have a nice experience. You may need to do a few tweaks. So we're looking at adding UI workflows to, um, to do that. 
Um, and thank you.